Hello and welcome. My name is Prue or Prue LaRue. I am just some rando who <laughs> loves playing with colourful eyeshadow. I saw Eyes of Alexandra do this tag just today, I think, and it's the another palette tag created by Kaylee Bout Boudy Bout. I'll have them both linked down below, but I thought it was just really fun to go through some palettes. I've definitely had my palettes on my mind. I'm going to make myself film my palette collection at some point, which I'm a bit nervous about. I thought this was just be fun, and I was really enjoying Eyes of Alexandra's Alexandra. <laughs> Her answer to the questions, I thought it'd be fun to share it with you guys. So the first question is the first palette you purchased. For me, I'm actually, I mean, I've got my first online purchase and that is the Tarte Make Believe in Yourself palette. I thought I was so cool when I bought this. <laughs> I just don't use it that much. I was going to declutter it, but then Makeup Struggles said that she really loved it, so I kept it and I still haven't really used it. I bought this because it was on sale and I was like, oh, this is a brand that all the influencers I watch buy and I shall get on it. So that's like my first online purchase. I remember being really excited when it came and then like it, it just, it started the whole rage. My first palette I ever bought upon stepping into Mecca, which is one of my favorite makeup stores, is the Too Faced Peach Palette. Look at this little boring butte. I've kept it because it is the first one I bought from Mecca and I bought it because I asked the girl I need um I want a palette that's versatile and easy to use and easy to learn from and she recommended this. I don't know if I would recommend it myself but it, it's okay. Um, It's mostly the color story that doesn't inspire me to use it. Then the most recent palette you purchased, I actually don't have this on me, but here it is. That's the Menagerie Cosmetics Feral palette. In my collab video with Cher Jonathan, we talked about, in the five rounds video, we talked about it. One of the biggest factors for me is that I haven't bought it because the shipping was so expensive. Uh, previously when I've looked, it's been $43 US to ship, but when I double checked the other day, it was 23 US dollars. I was like, bugger it, I'm doing it. So I have, a the feral palette coming my way which i'm just excited to play with one you regret missing out on for me it's kind of like currently the one that i think about the most is the urban decay game of thrones palette i was oh, i had it in my cart i had it in my cart and it disappeared i'm not super into the color scheme but i do like the i look well i did really like game of thrones before the final episode and it just is a vibe I thought it was a really fun palette and a really fun collector's item to have, but I missed out. I know it's still available in the US, but Game of Thrones kind of bombed with that final episode, so I'm okay that I missed out on it, but I definitely, for me, that's the last palette that I've sort of been like, oh, I need it, I need it, and I've missed out. One that makes you happy to look at, I think at the moment, and I haven't used it much yet, but it, it's got to be the Blue Moon. It just, it makes me so happy to look at it. I love blue color. I, blue is just my favorite color. So this makes me happy to use it, like happy to look at. It's the sole reason I bought it. One you've changed your mind about. That's got to be Colourpop again. This is the Yes Please palette. Um, I also have stickers on this. I remember buying this. I got up at 3 a.m. for this. And then the next release, I got up at 3 a.m. because I decided to buy it for my friend and my sister. And I just kept buying it. Um... I remember being so excited by it and being like, oh my god, this is amazing, this is the palette I need, it's gonna change my life. No. It, it's, it's fine, but it, it's so boring now. One that surprised you, that's gonna be for me the Viseart Petite Pro 3. I sent this over to Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner and she mentioned it recently in her 20 Worst Products from 20 Brands video. I paid like a a nice amount of money for it. I think it was like $50 for this tiny ass little palette that was beautifully packaged. I think I have a three looks one palette up on it and I just hated working with it. I hated everything about it and I've heard so many good things about Viseart so it was so confusing to me and it just really surprised me that it was so shit and I was glad that I got clarification that it was shit by an Annette so I was grateful for that and yeah that just it, it surprised me. One that inspires you the most. My problem is I have so many different things in my collection but for sure, at the most, it's got to be the Lethal Cosmetics palette, custom palette I made. 
I love the colors I've just chosen, the way I've mixed it, and I just, this palette is beautiful. I've got my Four Looks One custom palette video up already, so do make sure to go check it out if you're interested in what I do create with this look, this palette. But this is definitely in my inspo. On your wish list, it's gonna be Strobe Cosmetics Creepy Cute. I just can't pull the trigger on it. I've been waiting for them to release a new palette. I wasn't interested in Divinity and I'm waiting for the third one to come out, but it, it doesn't seem like it's happening. So I don't know, I'll just keep going on. And hopefully one day I will own it. A lot of people say, I feel bad magic, but a lot of people say that the colors are a bit of a dupe for the pa pastel goth palette. And this, this was a favorite. Well, like, is it, I don't know. The Kat Von D pastel goth is quite, is one of my favorite palettes I have. And that's why I'm so excited for the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker collection to come out for those pastels and to just sort of see how it stacks up. It is limited edition, you can't get it anymore, so it doesn't really matter. And your no fail palette. So for me, if I'm wearing makeup to work, I need it to be reliable. It's gonna be a neutral palette and it's gotta be, to be handy dandy. And the Stiller Eyes of the Windows Soul Palette. This little fella is really hard to mess up with. It's perfect for 5.30 a.m. wake up times so when your brain is half there. It just, it blends nicely, the shimmers are nice. You can't go too overboard and you can go very muted too. So this is my no fail palette that I pull out for work because that's when I need a no fail palette. Otherwise, if I'm wearing colorful makeup, I've got time to mess around. I, I don't think I can think of a colorful no fail palette per se. I mean, I feel like the Kaleidos collection is a pretty good no fail, but there's so many different color schemes that I love, so it just depends. Whereas neutral browns, no fail, that's a win. Anyway, I really enjoyed this tag. This is super old from the creator, but I thought it was just a fun one to bring up. And I actually love to see some people do it who have a colorful collection. Uh, so I'll list some people down in the description bar below. I'd love to see you do this tag. Let me know if you do. Oh, and let me know some of the answers to this question. I would love to know what is like your most inspo palette. What is your no fail palette? I'd absolutely love to know. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it.